Good. Andrew, who's totally not another plant. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. <laughs> You're talking to Eric and Daryl. How are you doing? Hi. Hey, hey, Andrew. Hey, Daryl and, uh, hey, Eric. Uh, Eric. Wow, I just want to say, Jake, I, I agree with you guys. That was amazing. And I love <laughs> that he's asking questions. I love that he's calling, and I hope he calls again. Oh, wow. Um, but yes, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Well, thank you for calling in. And so Tell um, him why you're calling in. Yeah, why Andrew? are you calling in? Well, I guess first, let, let me just say that uh, if there's anyone that's a pastor or anyone that's a spiritual leader in the church right now, please listen. Like, this is not just for people who are atheists. Like, Recovering from Religion is, is a, I'm a volunteer at Recovering from Religion, and I absolutely love what we do because we don't tell people what to believe. And that's the most critical thing that someone who's doubting their faith or their beliefs needs to hear is that they are in charge of finding their own truths. There is something so fundamental to someone who is terrified of losing their community that they, they might go to someone in your congregation and if they knew that we existed, like I wish I knew, because I didn't know. And I went to my congregation and I actually came out to people that I literally led to the faith. And it was the most horrible thing to go through. When you're seeing this person in front of you, right down in front of you saying, why are you asking these questions when you're telling, you just told me that you knew these things were true. And, and so if you're a pastor, if you're a spiritual leader, you know, please check out Recovering From Religion. This organization is amazing. And honestly, our, our goal is to help support people. It's not to lead them in any direction at all. And so that's just like right up front. Like I hope there's someone listening. And uh, Andrew, can I ask but you? But I, I say, yeah, sure. Can I ask you, um, I, I believe you have some relevant experience here, right? Yes, that's right. What is your I background? I a functioning outreach pastor. You were an outreach pastor for what religion? Uh, the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. Oh, wow. <laughs> My goodness. Pretty so, heavy. <laughs> and, and so you're saying that this, that this helped. And what's the name of this project? Uh, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> well, well, so for me, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about recovering from religion. Uh, what happened was I, I had, you know, years and years of just, just struggle. You know, I relied on prayer on some really critical moments in my life. I relied on a lot of beliefs that I was forced to accept as a young child. And it fundamentally changed the way I lived. And it's, it's, not, it's not about God. Like, God can be real, and that's fine. But we should find him a reliable way so that that reliable way is used in every area of life. Because what happens is, and I don't think that a lot of people realize this, especially if you're one of those fundamental believers, is that you're going to use faith in other areas of your life without knowing it because it becomes second nature. Absolutely. You can't ride a bike differently just because it has a different seat on it. You're going to ride it the same way, and you're going to find yourself going down some dangerous paths, and before you know it, you're hurting your family. You're hurting your friends, and you're, you know, just making bad decisions well, for so, wrong reasons, but thinking you're doing good things. Well, so two things here. Um, absolutely, we phrase it a different way. Um, here on the show, I like to say that you have so many tools in your toolbox, and so when you're wanting to understand the world, you sure. reach for the relevant tool, and you use it. And so you may use a bad tool in many different places because you don't know that it's a bad tool. And I absolutely agree with you on that. But the other thing is, um, th I, this is relevant to me right now because I was on the Talk Heathen subreddit, and someone had written down, I'm so sorry for leading you here. Um, essentially, uh, was an ex-Mormon. And he was standing outside of the Mormon... Oh, yeah. Wow. Sure. And, and he's holding this, and he said, you know, from this year to this year, you know, I was a... Um, I was an elder. elder. I, I was on my mission. And I'm sitting there, and, and my heart's breaking because I'm, I'm thinking of... I'm, I'm thinking of people um, like the, the children who escaped uh, the Phelps family. Yeah. 
Nate right? Phelps. Nate and and, Phelps, and yeah. Megan Phelps Roper. Right, right. And I can't help but think that you can't hold on to that, brother. I mean, no, by all means, I I, uh, I don't. Good. Uh, that good. may have came across a little more emotional than it actually was. Okay, uh, I'm, 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 my heart's reaching out to you. I'm like, dude, you're here now, though. You <laughs> yeah, know, and we love you. Yeah, we love yeah. having you on the Recovering from Religion Volunteers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Nate Phelps, you no, may not sorry, know. I, I, Nate Phelps was actually on our board of directors, and still a big supporter of Recovering from Religion. I, Isn't that cool? It is really, really cool. I'm really, really jealous. You know him. Yeah, I know him very well. He's a good friend. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, I, I love to talk about what I do at Virgin Room Religion. You know, I, I, I love to, uh, it's kind of like, imagine there's two people at a lunch table and you each have a lunchbox. All we're doing at Recovering from Religion is just saying, hey, do you have a sandwich in there? And they open that lunchbox up and they say, yeah, I have a sandwich here. And then do you have a bag of chips? Yeah, I have a bag of chips. Do you have a, do you have a drink? Yeah, I have a drink. Okay, well, what would you like to do from here? All we're doing is helping them unpack where they're at. We're not telling them they have to have a sandwich. They have to have the chips. They have to eat it. They have to drink. We're just helping them unpack where they're at mm -hmm. to help them know where they can go. Absolutely. Um, when I trained for the, for the Hotline Project, I remember that was drilled into my head, meet them where they're at. <laughs> yep. Meet them where they're right. at. He still got a hole in his head where we drilled. Oh, it. dude. Yeah, no, that's not coming out. And actually, that informed the way that we started this show. Cool. cool. Uh, so, yeah. Good. Good. Um, Andrew, thank you for doing what you do. I'm, oh, I'm really glad. I'm, I'm thankful for, I have to say that Gail and, and, and Daryl and a lot of the other leadership there, you know, I've been in the corporate world before as well. And you get those managers that have a degree and no experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can tell. You can tell when these teams are ran by these managers with zero experience. Well, that's not the case. You know, I know that my leadership has the experience. They understand what it feels like to be where these people are. And so when they give advice, when they give counsel, you know, direction or training materials, you can count on that it's going to be what this person needs. And uh, it's just wonderful. I just, I just love the organization. I, well, I've I've got to I've got to also take a it. big fan of Talk Even. Yay! Um, also a huge fan. Andrew, I, I got to piggyback on on you for that because I totally agree. Um, in fact, in my experience meeting Gail and meeting Daryl, um, they remembered me, <laughs> and I they had no reason to. And the second time I saw them, I Gail in particular gave me this giant hug, and um, they are two people who when you get to meet, you feel immediately like you're home. Um, I agree Absolutely. with you. They're wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, brother. We're going to move on to a couple more calls while we can, but thank you for doing what you do. All right. Thank you for doing what you're doing. <laughs> Definitely. Take care. You too.